Hi, this is Habiba and you're on to Biba's Canadian Journey. If this is your first time, thank you so much for watching. Today, I'm going to be talking about a very exciting topic, a topic which a lot of people have asked me about. And that topic is, is there racism in Canada or does racism exist in Canada? Oftentimes, you know, you hear people say Canada is one of the most migrant friendly countries in the world or friendless countries in the world. Actually, a recent poll did show that Canada is the most welcoming country in the world right now. If you're relocating to Canada as a permanent residence and you get to the airport once you're done with your um, immigration, nine out of 10, the officers, immigration officers tell people, welcome home, you know, suggesting that this is your new home, you know, to um, stretch out that arm of friendliness. So Canada is, yes, um, considered as a friendly um, country, but people still wonder, does racism exist? Is there discrimination or should I say are immigrants discriminated in Canada? And so I'm going to answer that question today. So let's get started. As usual, these questions are going to be, um, the answer is going to be from my point of view, my experience. Um, I called up a few friends in other provinces just to also, you know, get their headspace. And, um, you know, so that's what we're going to be discussing today. I like to be very honest and candid when people ask me this kind of questions. And um, so I'm going to come from an angle, I'm going to give examples of situations where um, good and bad situations where I've experienced discrimination since coming here. And I'm also going to give good examples where I have been um, shown extra, should I say extra love because I'm an immigrant. Okay, so let's start with, let's start with um, good examples. In my daughter's school, my daughter is in daycare. So every Friday for about an hour in the afternoon, they have what they call um, dance party and the kids really love it. What it is is that they just play music for them for an hour and the kids dance. The children really, really love it. Like my daughter every week, she's like, is it Friday yet? Is it Friday yet? So on this particular occasion, we came to pick her up and the owner of the school called me and she says, it's like Zoe really loves dance party. You know, anytime dance party is on, she's always dancing and she's always, you know, giving some steps. Is this an African thing? I said, yes, it's an African thing. My goodness, I need to invite you for a Nigerian party or a Nigerian wedding to see, you know, how we dance and how we boogie and how we... And she, she was so excited and she asked if we could um, record some Nigerian songs and, um, you know, and give the school so they can play it during, dance, um, during their dance party. She said, I'm sure the students and the teachers would enjoy it. So I was like, okay, fine. So my husband did that, recorded some groovy Nigerian songs and we took it um, to them. And one Friday we went to pick her up and in the car we started hearing um, one, two, three, one, two, three. You know the dance, um, the song by Nikki Lawe, shout out to Nikki Lawe by the way. And we're like, ah, where is that music coming from? Actually I thought it was my phone or the radio, then we just realized it was um, um, coming from the daycare. And we go in and all the children are dancing, all the teachers, owners of the school, everybody. And they're like, this is groovy. This is nice. Can we get some more songs? I was like, wow. You know, it just made us feel very welcome. Another example is um, when we first came here and I was applying for jobs, I registered with an employment agency. And on this particular occasion, the um, re um, recruiter called me and says, um, you know, the company wants me to attend an interview. I'm attending an interview with eight other candidates or applicants. I was like, okay. A couple of days after the interview, she calls me back and says, um, so it's down to you and this other girl. You know, they, um, we had to do the interview involved some competency tests, some, you know, technical tests. And she says, you guys were the highest. So it's down to the both of you. I was like, oh, okay, excellent. A couple of days later, she calls me and she says, you, um, you got the job. They want to take you. So obviously I was excited and I just said out of curiosity, you know, um, what made them choose me? Because a couple of days ago you had mentioned 
that uh, um, me and this other girl, you know, came top in the interview. So what was special? <laughs> so once in a while, we like you know, people to blow our horns. You know, what was special about, you know, why did they choose me? And she said that um, the truth is, you know, um, companies in Canada, and she was very honest with me, companies in Canada now um, are beginning to do a lot of diversity and inclusion, and, you know, and so the, the, um, the HR of the organization asked, you know, they said my name looked, you know, unfamiliar and they said I was an immigrant, you know, um, and they asked if I was a racial, minor, a visible racial minority and she said yes and they said yes, that's who we want, that they're opening their organization to hire more racial minorities and she's like, so you got the job? And I was like, oh, fantastic. I never thought I would be in a position where I'll get a job because of the color of my skin. And before I got off the phone with her, she said, Habiba, next time you're applying for a job interview, in the cover letter, kindly put a paragraph and say you identify as a visible racial minority. She says in Canada, that is gonna go a long way because the workforce is changing. I was like, wow, interesting, that's good to know. And the truth is nowadays when you see a lot of jobs, um, a lot of job adverts, um, when they put the job roles and specification and the qualifications they need at the bottom, they, uh, they actually encourage African Nova Scotians to apply people with um, vis visible um, racial minorities like ourselves or women or people with disabilities like that are encouraged to apply. They actually, some would state a priority. They'll be given priority in this application process. So for me, I was like, wow, that's fantastic. You know, this is, this is amazing. And other such um, examples where I have been, me or my family have been embraced, you know, um, because we're immigrants and because of the color of our skin. So good examples. Now, the not so good examples, or let me call it what it is, the really bad examples. <laughs> the bad examples. Um, I was talking to a friend uh, and she reminded me of a time where she and her husband entered, they're, they're Nigerians, they're black, they entered an elevator and in the elevator they met up with, there were three middle-aged white women in the elevator and you could tell that those women were, were going up so they pressed, you know, they're about to get into the elevator and when the elevator door opened and the white women saw them there was some kind of fear you know they knew the women had not reached their destination but as soon as they got into the elevator the women went out okay now you can say okay maybe it is their imagination maybe they're doing okay let me give another example this time this was um this was actually in the workspace so i had started work a colleague of mine's colleague is Caucasian. We were having um, coffee in the lunch room, in the break room, and um, there was this new coffee machine, and we we're eager to try it out. And we didn't know how to use it. And anyway, long story short, we made a huge mess. You know, coffee being spilled everywhere, hot water spilled everywhere. And instinctively, we got kitchen towels and we began to clean. You know, without you know thinking about it, this colleague she started cleaning the countertop. I started cleaning the floor because some hot water had spilled on the floor. And as I was cleaning, I, you know, I could sense that there was someone behind me. So I stood up and I turned and there was this mid middle-aged lady. And this organization I was working with was a very big one, different departments. And so I turned and looked at her because I, I was wondering why she was standing behind me. And in a very rude tone, you know, very impatient and she says um are you not the support i'm part of the support staff or cleaning staff she's been waiting for something she's made a mess around her um, table her, her cubicle and she wants somebody to come and clean can i just go to her cubicle and clean you know and it took a while for, for me to understand what she was saying like i had to reboot i'm like where is this what what is going on I'm, you know the things were not making the things were not making sense so I realized that, oh, okay, because of my color and because because my colleague was standing there with kitchen towels in her hands that were brown, soaked in coffee. And because she's white, she didn't even think she was a cleaner. But, and I'm still standing there. And then she looks at me, she says, I'm not talking to you. Go clean, da, 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 da. So I had to be calm first. 
I really tried that day and I put her off should I say I made it clear to her I told her who I was I told her my position what department and I emphasized that don't just assume that I'm a cleaning staff because of the color of my skin I said I can actually make a complaint of racism because of this you've just done she turned pink literally you could see the color she turned pink and she was trying to apologize trying to say ah no she didn't i just waltz out emphasis on waltz out i was very angry but in my anger i went to my desk and i cried in fact when i got home i was still crying and i told my husband can you imagine my husband was like listen as long as it's not your boss or your supervisor you're always gonna have ignorant people around but that one this particular incident it pained me it entered one i get all the time you know and i used to correct people but now i just it's oh my goodness you're from nigeria oh your english is fantastic where did you learn how to speak english and I'm like, ah, i don't understand where did i learn and i've heard a lot of new english girls say they get that you go for an interview and you know because they you know you tell them you're an immigrant or where you're coming from that oh you're english where, where did you learn how to speak and i'm like we speak fantastic english in nigeria excuse me if you go to nigeria right now you're not going to be hearing um monkey language you're going to be hearing english we speak english and then you can see they're taken aback majority of the time is ignorance i believe that if people know better they might do better okay so now i've given some examples of good you know good scenarios and bad scenarios so i'm going to throw the question back to you you decide based on this example if it is worth relocating to canada and if racism does exist in canada and while you're thinking of the answer okay i'm going to throw another question to you and this one i'm very honest if you know any country or any place in this world that there's no discrimination or racism tribalism or whatever please let me know just drop a message please so i can consider relocating there as long as it's not antarctica and i don't have to live in an igloo please <laughs> let me know i might just relocate there if such a place exists because I have been privileged to live in Nigeria. I was in the UK for over 10 years and then here. And I can tell you that I have experienced racism and discrimination everywhere, even in Nigeria, my home country. When I was in Nigeria, I worked with several NGOs. One of the NGOs I worked with, you know how NGO work is in Nigeria now, that you're working with expatriates, you know, they bring in foreign money. One of this particular NGOs the discrimination against in home staff Nigerian staff was so much I had to protest they came up with rules um, such rules where you know um, local staff Nigerian staff could not be in the same car with expatriates so for instance if you're going to the airport you have to go to another state the local staff you have to take an uber the expatriates would take the AC the big Jeep with security or when we go for work out of state the local staff will stay in local cheap hotels and the expatriates will stay in the likes of radisson blue and echo hotel and i was always always protesting this kind of incidences but for me it was more painful because i'm like this is my own country this is you know and then i go to the uk to school the same thing the, i remember once um it was after my masters or during my masters you part of the course there was a work placement and it was a school that was going to arrange the work placement it was a mixed class you know you had your you know the eu staff the british staff i'm sorry eu um, students the british students and immigrants and what we realized was that all the i was in oil and gas state all the um what do they call it all the EU staff and British, all the EU students and British students, they got paid internships. Their internships were paid. We, the immigrants, the Nigerians and the Asians, they, they gave us internships that were not paid. In fact, we got like the bottom of the, you know, bottom pot um, internships. They either sent us to the school library or to the school. I was sent to the communications department of the university, you know, doing 
the crap work, so to say, with no pay. So this, you know, discrimination is, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. But for me, what is comforting about Canada is that you can see that, first of all, they realize that racism exists in Canada. The other day, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau came out to say he realized it's been going on and he made one sentence I can never forget. He said, hate does not have any place in Canada. Not racism, but hate, right? So they realize, because the first step is actually the realization, admitting that it is, um, it happens. And then also taking steps. You can see the steps. Yes, they're baby steps, but little drops of ocean, you know, little drops of water fill the mighty ocean. Yes, they're baby steps, but steps are being taken to try and curb this racism. Where I work right now, a new team was set up, uh, you know, um, it's called a di diversity and inclusion team to make sure that the organization is very diverse and inclusive. And the, at first, when I told the team, I said, mm, I hope this is you know, but the team is actually filled with immigrants who, who know uh, what it is to be discriminated about against and who can actually tell the organization where to make those changes. And a lot of organizations are including, are including diversity and inclusion into their, you know, into their organizational um, manuals, you know. And so for me, it says a lot that they want to do things better and hopefully one day just one day it might become racism free fingers crossed <laughs> okay that's all um for me for today thank you so much i hope this has been able to answer some of your questions and again if this is your first time joining thank you if you if you are yet to subscribe Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button it's really easy some lady sent me a lady sent me a message on instagram she said um when is your new video coming out and i said when was the last one you watched and she told me and i said i've had two other videos after that so you need to subscribe so you can get um notified when there's a new video out until next time do take care